Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth video. We're going to have a look at whether it's day 14 days for today's fourth video. Day 10 will take us to the 11th of uh, April. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Exeter GFS ECM Ensembles. Very much around a weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that gets us... Towards the final stages of April, I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just to save that first video today for 6 a.m. upload with release weekend forecast and the ECM day for two days slash six weeks. Okay, so please check out those two vids. If you'd like to do that, like, share, subscribe on video. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. We've reached um 15.7k. We're on the grind now to um 15.8k. The ultimate target six. 16,000, less than 300 to go. Maybe we'll get to 16k in the summer. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? Um, anyway, please give us a sub. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday as well. Right, we're going to start off section 10. We've got confirmation of uh, March's CT. So March came out at 7.0, which is getting off 1.5 degrees above the 61 to 1990 average, so set against the old and cold temperature average that they are using still as their averages, uh, or for their averages here on the CT page at UK. I'm not sure why um, they're still using 61 to 1990 here, but they are, so um, then against that, it's a 1.4 degrees above average. However, if you set that against 81 to 2010, or indeed 91 to uh, 2020, uh, <coughs> so sorry, buddy. Um, then uh, you find that CT is actually within half a degree of average. So set against the more recent averages, uh, it was about average, you know, ever so slightly above, but uh, within half a degree, which I would regard as like uh, about average, set against the more, um, the, the two most recent averages, 81 to 2010, and uh, also set against um, 91 to 2020. It was a significantly above average month, though, compared to 61 to 1990, and that is after a very cold start to uh, the month. So the first week, 10 days were um, very, very cold, um, and then, of course, it got uh, a lot milder through uh, the uh, the uh, middle part of the month and into the second half of the month. So there we go. Uh, so far for January, obviously a mild of an average year so far. Well, I sh should say so far for 2023, mild an average year so far. January comes out about one and a half degrees above average. Very February exceptionally mild. Uh, March you get around one and a half degrees above average. That's all 61 to 1990. But it would be nice if UK Met could change the uh, average and therefore be anomalies to a more recent and perhaps more relevant um, average, taking out the very cold decade of the 1960s. But of course, that's above my pay grade. So that's down to uh, the UK Met. We're going to wait and see what happens in April, of course. And uh, so we'll move on, have a look at the GFS upright temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Whittington uh, today. So the red line is the first year upper air temperature average for Whittington. And uh, you can see that we're actually on a little bit below average now for uh, the next day or so. However, early next week, we're going to find the upper air temperatures starting to uh, lift up again. And then hovering very close to uh, long-term averages, really, as we go into the middle part of the You can see from the thick green line, which is the GFS operational run, now, early on, it's one of the warmer ensemble members. And then later on, it's one of the, <laughs> one of the colder ensemble members. So, uh, as ever, the GFS operation room is like quite extreme compared to uh, the rest of its ensemble. Precipitation wise, quite interesting. Certainly, a lot of dry weather now for the next week to 10 days. However, we've got a wetter trend here as we go into the middle and uh, second half of April. So, maybe it's going to be a short lived drier spell. And uh, then the deluge <laughs> will come back. Let's hope not. Uh, let's hope not. We need a while of drier weather now, I think. Temperature anomaly is on the 1st to the 9th of April. Can we have a little bit cold on average at England? Where is that probably down to uh, a couple of really quite cold nights that we've got coming up early next week, um, Sunday night, and again, Monday night with clear skies. Looks uh, really quite cold. Scotland to Northern Ireland, and actually the rest of Ireland looking uh, reasonably above average and precipitation and obviously the first night people they're coming out drier than normal as well 
Uh, right, so latest win back from Urban Roll School. Next show is about getting rid of the area of low pressure. It gave us all of wet, windy weather yesterday. That's going off into the low countries and Germany and in its wake with pulling in this uh, easterly wind. And that wind will drag in cloud and uh, a few showers to the east through this afternoon. Eventually, that easterly wind will bring clear skies tomorrow. So good, we'll get sunshine. But a cold night on Sunday. Check out weekend forecast for more about what weather has in store in uh, the coming week. Right, Tim Gaming, you can make your own run uh, with chart data starting off with like, a truly high pressure is in control of weather. That high pressure gets eroded a little bit through the middle part of the week and when the system comes into northwest, bring some outbreaks of rain. Then, and then the high pressure re strengthens actually as we go into the east of the weekend, which gets us to midnight on Saturday. The high pressure is centered over Scandinavia now. Wind is coming in from an easy direction. So it could be quite a chilly wind by the time we get into uh, the weekend. It might drag in quite a lot of cloud as well. Icon, uh, again, looking like this on Tuesday. High pressure dominates weather, bringing lots of dry weather through the middle part of the week. Weather system just brushing into the far northwest of Scotland, bringing some showery bursts there. But basically, high pressure is in control through uh, much of next week. And that high pressure sticks around into the Easter weekend as well. Not as far north with the high pressure. With icons, so consequently, it shouldn't be quite as chilly, I don't think, as we go into uh, the weekend. Um, and maybe, you know, a little bit uh, sunnier as well, as the wind's coming a little bit more from the continent. At this time of year, the position of the high pressure is going to make a really big difference. You know, if, it, if high pressure is there and the wind is coming right south of east, then it can be reasonably mild, even quite warm. Um, but if high pressure is far enough north and the wind starts coming in north of east, then it can still be quite cold. So... The exact position of high pressure, the exact position is always important, really, but particularly so at this time of year, where there's a very, very fine margin between uh, a, a relatively warm southeasterly and quite a cold northeasterly. Um, right, again, okay, the GFS Midnight Run, again, showing high pressure sitting over and to the east of the country on Tuesday, bringing lots of dry over it just gets eroded a little bit towards the northwest as we go through into uh, the middle part of the week, some dry rain there, and the high pressure really strengthens at the end of the week and into the weekend, the ridge pushing back into western parts of Europe, bringing a lot of dry weather, not much of an easy wind there, so I think that's relatively pleasant, probably going to get temperatures into mid teens so it could, be, could be a little bit chilly, by night, but overall not too bad at all with the GFS uh, for the Easter weekend. And turn around to Easter Monday, and the high pressure just start pulling further north, and we start dragging in what looks like a rather cloudy and somewhat colder northeast wind. And then actually in the extended range, the GFS midnight run turns really quite cold, with the high pressure going uh, even further north, becoming a little blocky feature, and bringing in like a proper east or northeast wind. And that's actually quite a cold wind. The upper air temperature shows my 10 Celsius ice firm in the North Sea. It's a cold outlier, uh, as ever. The GFS operations always seems to be an outlier in one way or another. Um, this midnight GFS run was a cold outlier. But again, you know, after the SSW, we know there's potential, but we might get further cold shocks as we're going through April, especially the first half of it. Greatest risk of that. So it's one to watch. Hopefully it won't verify. I think we've all had enough of, like, cold weather now after that cold snap the first uh, 10 days of March. But nevertheless, it's one to watch. We finish up looking like that high pressure out to our west. It's not as cold, but it's still rather chilly with the air coming from the northwest direction around that high pressure. A lot of dry weather with that GFS um, uh, midnight run. This is how GFS 6 is looking. Once more, high pressure dominated weather on Tuesday. And in Wednesday as well, just a little bit more unsettled in the north and west. And at the end of the week, high pressure strengthens over and to the north of the country, brings lots of dry weather with it up to day can. We don't get as much of an easterly wind. So that looks like a relatively pleasant Easter weekend. I have to say, lots of useful dry weather. Temperature probably close to average. A little bit of a chilly easterly there around the 12th of April. That doesn't last for long, though. Um, and basically, high pressure continues to bridge through the country. So, quite a pleasant GFS 6 7 run. Lots of dry weather up to the 17th of April, and not as cold as the midnight run. If you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell about Gals and Urban. So, thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. GM, again, with high pressure dominating. 
3 b Middle Park, Wigan Road, Morris Settle, up to the north of west with some showery outbreaks of rain up there. Into the east weekend, high pressure strengthens to our east, low pressure out to west. That starts to bring up more of a southerly, south-easterly. So that's warmer into the um, east weekend. I reckon that would deliver temperatures into the upper teen Celsius, maybe, uh, as we go through the east weekend. That would be really quite a warm east indeed, that high pressure to our east, low pressure out to our uh, west. We finish up looking like that. Still bring up wind from right to southerly, southeasterly direction. So very pleasant um, GM run, if you like, uh, warmer temperatures. And then the ECMWF looks like this. So again, the high pressure with lots of dry weather to the south through the middle part of uh, this coming week uh, will be more unsettled though up to the north and west. Remember, high pressure strengthens close to the country into the easter weekend, although it's not picking up more of an easterly wind. That probably brings quite a lot of cloud into south and east with it as a bit of a chill. Um, and then we move up toward day 10 and low pressure starts coming in from off the line. So as early as day 10, the ECM is starting to break down the, uh, the dry weather. Um, <laughs> let's hope not. Let's hope not. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. The trend is a drying one over the next few days. It will be a little shadow rain into the northwest through the middle part of uh, next week. Most of that fizzles out before it gets into the south boat. Um, then we're back to mostly dry weather over the Easter weekend, albeit with the Easter where we bring quite a lot of cloud and some showers into eastern areas over the east weekend. Yes, they are still looking a little bit wintry, potentially over high ground in the east, like North York Moors. And then by day 10, we've got the wet weather beginning to gather back in the Atlantic and starting to uh, move in once more. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles for Day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 11th of April. 36 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure uh, retreating to back into Scandinavia. Low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. That's breaking down the high. Tony Moore and Santa Bank Cooper Control and the Operation Running. It's the majority option as well, by the way. So that's only being more unsettled as early as day 10. Big ding members of the ECM ensembles, much more anti cyclonic, much more in line with like the GFS operations, I suppose. Um, you know, something could be chilly, could be bringing in like a northeasterly type wind, something could be relatively warm, but those 15 have high pressure maintained up to day 10. And then in two week time, these are the options that we've got. Uh, this gets us to the 16th of uh, April. 18 members of the ECL ensembles with low pressure just to the west of Ireland. High pressure across northern Scandinavia. That's becoming more unsettled, I think. Uh, then we've got 14 places in us under uh, a, a, a low better, a trough of low pressure. Obviously, that's going to be uh, unsettled. We've got 12 keeping the ridge going. I mean, they keep us settled. And they've got seven here. That are not only unsettled with low pressure through the northwest Europe, but also cold as they have a mid Atlantic ridge up to Greenland, and so they'd be bringing in like a northeasterly wind. Now, if we put the 18 there together with the 14 there and the 7 there, clearly the vast majority of the ECM ensembles are turning things unsettled at the two week mark or by the two week mark. Um, uh, varying whether that would be warm rain or cold rain, but <laughs> they're all turning things, or most of them are turning things a lot more unsettled at uh, two weeks out. So there is a bit of a question mark about how long this high pressure we're going to hold on for before we're back into the unsettled conditions. CFS meets you finally, beats a 500 millibar height and normally break down into weak periods. The first week period will take us from the 1st to the 7th of April. The coming week has high pressure dominating across the north west Europe. Lots of dry weather with that. Week 2 is going to be the 8th to the 14th of April. High pressure still in control of the weather. So lots of dry issues through the first half of April. Week 3 15th to 21st of April goes more unsettled. Low pressure comes in off the Atlantic, so we get a more unsettled third week with spells of rain, but not for long with that under high pressure for week 4. 22nd, 28th of April, the high pressure comes back. It's time centered somewhere around Germany or uh, Denmark. And that should be quite a warm ridge, actually. That should get wind into the south and, uh, you know, maybe into the 20 Celsius with temperatures uh, by then. Four weeks out, though, so a long way away. 
Right, if you've enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, subscribe, make so much to do about. Uh, and don't, don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. We thank you so very much, everybody, for doing this for gals or weather vids. Wow, 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 wow. Oh. Right, so uh, just to say that we've got three stories, April forecast coming up for you this evening. So uh, keep checking back to the channel, probably around 6, 7, something like that. Um, so keep checking back to the channel. Tomorrow, we're going to have the, uh, we're going to have 6 a.m. upload. We will have the latest, uh, eat, um, uh, uh, what are we talking about, summer update. And uh, there'll be a 10 to 14 there as well. So loads of loads going on on the channel tomorrow. Do keep checking back for all of it for this 10 to 14 day abode. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.